What do we really mean by cloud native applications and how is the LFN developing this through proofs of concept? As I, you uh, at Red Hat have been working um, on the virtual central office concept. Um, we first saw it last year. What does the VCO set out to achieve? Hi guys, thank you for the um, you know, conversation with Telecom TV. Last time when we spoke at Beijing, we had actually showed the first instance of virtual central office uh, demo. And the focus there was to actually try to create a generic blueprint or a generic architecture which is disaggregated and componentized so that we could plug in any components to build a residential and business model. And what we've done here at this particular event in ONS is to extend that further to create a mobile architecture for the virtual central office. Now the whole idea of cloud native, cloud native conversation comes into picture is that VCO as an architecture is, is, is pluggable, it's open, and it is componentized or completely disaggregated. You should be able to run any kind of uh, you know, network functions, applications on that. And to evolve that model to a cloud native uh, environment with containers, with microservices, that's the goal we're trying to achieve. What's the advantage of doing this through open source communities? Well, lots of advantages. First of all, everybody brings in a different perspective. Uh, power of the community really is, you know, where innovation's coming from. Uh, we see contributors, I mean, what we were able to show in a very short period of time right here at this particular event is you know, we could put in a platform, a virtual EPC, an open air interface, that's another open source community that's actually building the new radio models for, you know, that'll pave the way for 5G for, for Office. We showed a split architecture where they actually provided that coding. Last time we had a number of vendors actually putting in their pieces of code into Open Daylight to actually create a fabric that was, you know, manageable by a single SDN controller. And so all of these pieces of software are open source and then weaving through that any of the commercial products into it to build a complete end-to-end -end service. So uh, it, it's really cutting edge stuff that wasn't done before and community coming together, various different companies and vendors coming together to actually build it. I mean, you, you've got a lot of communities and organizations involved in, in, the, in, the, in this POC. Absolutely. So what, what, is, what has been the, the interest and, and, and the feedback so far? It's been really great. Um, we have we've had actually four communities involved in this project. We had OPNFV, we had Open Daylight, we have Open Stack, and we have Open Air Interface. Four of them, then 11 vendors. There are a total of 15 people coming together to actually make this uh, type of an environment happen. Um, some of the concepts that we showed are really cutting edge in terms of taking the architecture that was built in the 5G4 you know, uh, spec of splitting the RAN components into a centralized unit distributor. Applying that to an LTE radio, developing code to demonstrate that concept so that some of the new 5G services like the ultra low latency uh, service, ultra reliable low latency, or the mo enhanced mobile broadband, those services can be now realized. So people can try to experiment with this whole VRAN thing before they actually change it to the new radio spec. That's the power, that's the beauty this brings to the table. You uh, showed the working proof of concepts, uh, very impressive as, as well. Um, what's next for you? Where, where do you take this next? Well, we have a number of things that we can still for, uh, enhance this particular architecture on. First of all, currently we're using you know, a lot of OpenStack SDN controllers. There's a lot of move to work for this OpenStack environment to move towards containers. In fact, we were using OSP 13 release, which is all fully containerized. Now, we have uh, network functions that we're also running as virtual machines. And a lot of vendors are bringing out network functions that are disaggregated and more microservices based. So I think the move towards making this whole environment truly cloud native, high, you know, uh, ability to dynamically scale, uh, then add components like ONAP, which is again, you know, built on microservices and containers into this, and use ONAP to orchestrate the entire environment are some of the things that we're looking going forward. Um, and then demonstrate more advanced use cases. The, you are ultra reliable, low latency, with augmented reality or virtual reality, those type of use cases. I think that's really good. 
And does this parallel the, the move we're seeing at the moment from VNFs to so-called CNFs, these, these cloud native Actually, functions? Uh, that VNF to CNF is something that we will really use as part of this exercise, as part of this work. Because the VNF to CNF move is incredibly important. The v, the, what's happening is, if you see how VNFs are being disaggregated, people are looking at control data plane separation first. Data plane still needs some level of acceleration. It can, data plane can still run in virtual machines in order to use some of the infrastructure, you know, underpinnings or capabilities that it needs. Control plane can be easily you know, modified into a microservices model and microservices architecture and orchestrated and placed in different places. So we, I personally think actually that it might happen in a little bit of two-step model, which is first you'll see a control data plane separation model, and then you'll see the control plane doing completely disaggregated. And then you'll see a data plane now with this whole 5G allowing you to place a, a user plane function, UPF, in any location or in multiple locations to efficiently use the infrastructure. So for those companies who weren't involved at this, this stage of the VCO demo, can they still get involved? Absolutely, this is a community demo. I mean, community is the one that's driving this and it's an open invitation for anybody to join us. If you are a vendor, commercial vendor, and you have you know, uh, plans to disaggregate your VNFs into you know, uh, container functions or CNFs, uh, bring it along we'll be more than happy to actually you know, you know, incorporate that. If you have other ideas that you want to actually incorporate as part of this, you know, add more orchestration components, add data plane enhancements, data plane acceleration stuff, uh, please, we'll be more than happy. In fact, that's where we think things will go because if you take, let's say, 5G use cases, um, let's take augmented reality, let's take video distribution, the amount of bandwidth you're really talking about at the edge and one of the uh, providers I was talking to, they did some, some exercise for sizing that. Apparently, it was, in, they need eight racks of equipment, multiple terabits per square kilometer. That's pretty huge. Without data plane acceleration, you can't make that happen. Without disaggregating components and being able to dynamically manage, that's not gonna happen. So to realize that that's where we are all going with 5G with all this, to realize that that's, that's what needs to happen eventually for, all, for you and I as consumers to be able to consume at the other end. Well, as I, we look forward to seeing how this evolves and, and, uh, and, and the possibilities that this opens up for us all. But for now, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Very nice to talk to you guys. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much.